All right, guys, this is Richard of Fish and Auto Channel and Reese.com, and we're in the show floor of Magna 2018 in Las Vegas. And I'm with none other than Paul of Apex Aquarium Consulting. How are you, man? Great. How are you, Richard? Good, good, good. I've actually been meaning to talk with Paul for a couple of years now, and he's someone in online, and he has such a good presence online that I actually very, you know, very much respect because he's fighting an extremely hard yet a good fight in quarantine and spreading the right information and correcting the misinformation that's out there and I'm with him right now and we're gonna talk about a few things that makes him cringe and we're gonna try to correct some of the misinformation that's out there about um, quarantine um, as, as well as some of the popular parasites out there and what we can do about them. Paul? So cryptocarrion is like the biggest parasite uh, misnomer out there that, you know, you, people have all kinds of treatments that they think work and really it's just the parasite's life cycle that we're seeing, partial immunity. So fish, you know, they, they have an immune system that can, can actually fight cryptocarrion themselves so um, it makes it extremely difficult to know what works and what doesn't based on just a visual glance um, so it's it's very important to to look at the the, the research out there on cryptocarrion cryptocarrion is well studied right right and and so we want to base our our, our treatment plan off of hard research that comes out on the the parasite so gotcha and uh, let me ask you one question uh, to start this off um, can people people always say this uh, when you, whenever there's this debate comes up on, on ick or cryptocarrions in general can if you quarantine can you have a tank without ick at all absolutely mm -hmm. um, you know if you quarantine everything wet and do it properly it, it's absolutely pro possible to have a cryptocarrion free tank and it's it's a lot easier than people make it seem mm -hmm. at the same time you have to have the right tools to do it absolutely and the right guidance to do it a lot of times because it's not it's not you know something that uh, is all the time uh, you know, feasible mm -hmm. one way, but you can do it mul multiple different ways right. with different species, and yeah. so um, that's kind of what I I try to guide people on. Gotcha. Because to my understanding, what it was is like you know the cryptocarrion is a parasite, mm -hmm. and it's not a virus, it's not a bacteria. So right. like you know, once it's properly er eradicated, and you don't introduce it to your system, you'll never have it. Right. And and it's it's not ubiquitous is basically what we call it. Mm -hmm. um, it, it can't sustain life without a host. Correct. So you you definitely want to make sure that uh, you you can have a, a anything wet go through you know a quarantine process. So. Now, what are the, some of the basic things that work, and what's uh, what are the some things that doesn't work? So we have uh, obviously. Uh, copper treatments, which can be harsh on certain species of fish, but is also one of the most effective ways of getting rid of uh, cryptocarrion uh, and, and various other parasites too that are actually a lot more dangerous. Um, then there's chlor uh, chloroquine's a, another one that's kind of an oldie but a goodie. Um, very difficult to test for most hobbyists, so it's one that I tend to uh, leave for the public uh, public aquarium sector, um, but you can definitely use it if you know how to test for it and how to or how to use it properly. Uh, tank transfer method, mm -hmm. cryptocarrion has a life cycle, so you got uh, you know when it's off the fish, you move the you move the fish to a new tank is a great way to to break that cycle right. um, and, and really help mm -hmm. you know, your, your fish get rid of the, the cryptocarrion really easy. And then of course hyposalinity, uh, one of the more difficult uh, sometimes I think uh, 
for people that are busy to execute properly, but it is an option on the table, right? Right, so. right, right. What are the few things that, that have you been seeing online and what are the things that, that make, kind of makes you cringe and want, want to uh, set straight? So, <laughs> everything from micro-bubbling oh to, okay. to garlic, to ginger, to um, just feed them heavy and it'll go away. Um, might be true, right? Because fishes have immune systems that, that can take care of that. But, you know, you have all kinds of uh, even deadlier parasites out there mm -hmm. um, that you're also eradicating while you're eradicating cryptocarrion mm -hmm. from your tank. And, you know, it, it can be a very, very devastating parasite. So, for sure. Probably, you know, it's, it's always hard because people say it worked for me. And mm -hmm. anecdotally, it, it seemed to. But it, it's always so, the, the water gets muddied yeah. with all these uh, parasites leaving the host and then coming back. And so you never really get yeah, to follow up with those Because people. just because you don't see it, it doesn't mean it's not present in the exactly. system. Exactly. But the thing is that your fish is not showing the symptoms because like, you, like he was saying, they, they gain that partial immunity and you don't, you don't see it here, but you may, you know, there may be some live and active in the gills. You know? Yeah, it's called a subclinical. Yeah. In, it, it's subclinical in, infection. So um, you don't really see symptoms, but it's still lingering there, right? Gotcha. So. And what are the few other things that that, that makes you just cringe? Uh, it's you know uh, people that that just want to manage the the parasite in ways that. It isn't in the best interest of fish, you know? That's really the yeah, the, the bad. That's the frustrating part. Frustrating part. Right, yeah. right. Because so. you know, like, I mean, Paul's been doing this for well over a decade. He's been, he's been you know, in this street for so long, mm -hmm. and he's so passionate about this. So whenever he kind of sees it, like, I guess, like, you know, it's the same for most of us. We just kind of get, like, get really frustrated and really upset. You know, it's like, you know, you, you buy these, you know, beautiful animal off the reef and yes. you, you bring it here. It's our job to provide uh, a great home. It's all you know? about ethical, you know, right. being ethical with your choices, being mm -hmm. ethical with your, your livestock. So, so Paul, well, what would you recommend for the hobbyist that's, that's watching right now? And what, are, what, what can you give them any tips or guidance? Well, um, definitely research what you're, what, what you want to do to, uh, prevent ick from, from getting in your system. Mm -hmm. um, I can help with that. Mm -hmm. Obviously, my, my company, that, that's part of what we do is quarantine plans. Mm -hmm. So if you have trouble, I mean, definitely give us a call, message us on Facebook, you know, whatever you need to do, and we can help you with, mm -hmm. with all those, those issues and more. You know, you have other, uh, again, uh, other parasites that are, are really, really uh, deadly to fish, a lot faster acting than, than cryptocarrion that right. we, we also want to treat for. I think that uh, quarantine is one of the best things you can do for the fish mm -hmm. and, you know. And for our, ourselves, actually. For, for also. ourselves, don't lose that hair, right? Yeah, because, so. I mean, you know, we all know, you know, like, it's not the money that, you, well, I guess, I guess the biggest motivator for, for a lot of people, and it shouldn't be like this, but it's, it's, it's the cost factors of all these animals that you're putting into your system. And, you know, like you're, gonna you're about to lose every single one. I mean, you, mm -hmm. you may be lucky here once, you may be lucky here twice, or a year, or two, I don't know. 20. Yeah, but I mean, it's, it could all just take, come with just one fish and just wipe out your system. And, and one stress event. Yeah. You know, a pump dies, a... a Temperature uh, fluctuation, temperature fluctuation yeah. heater heater breaks or mm -hmm. heater explodes in your tank, you know. Yeah. Um, just various other things, stray current, you know, stressing right. them out. So you, you definitely want to be prepared. It, it's right. a preparation tool. Right. So. All right, guys. So uh, once again, my name is Richard of Fish and Auto Channel, and this was Paul from Apex Aquarium Consulting. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something. And if there's any questions, feel free to contact Paul. Like I mentioned before, he had years of experience in this field. He worked at Mandalay Bay at Shark, Shark Exhibit. He worked at Live Aquaria uh, Divers Den, as well as many different type of uh, public, um, like you know, uh, public and non-public facilities regarding all these, um, you know, like a quarantine procedures, as well as so many different aspects of the hobby. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Thank you. Guys you. And you guys have a great day.
Hey guys, this is Richard at the Aficionado Channel and Reefs.com and we're here in Las Vegas 2019.